yeah let us continue with the language based security once this is done i will give you one of the uh, most important security models uh, for the information uh, flow security called the readers writers flow model and uh, so yeah, this is very subtle so you have to study it carefully so then you will understand what are the problems that are associated with saying whether a given program is secure or not in the context of multi level security yeah now let us understand by what it means by a flow secure access control so what does that mean you have the access control which is technically discrete access which says that whether a certain person can get an access to a certain resource in the language phenomenon you can also say whether somebody can read a variable at what level he can read etc kind of a framework so now the question is that for everything what is it you have to do after giving a discrete access to a certain resource be it a file or be it a memory or a variable you have to see where all the information can flow whether it is legitimately flowing or illegitimately flowing this is the basic problem if you are able to do that that is you provide a proper discrete access and then control the flow of information to only those principles that is subjects or objects that are authorized to do that then you will get a, a good level of security what i mean by good level of security is that there could be many other covered channels which is very difficult to completely enumerate at all the time so whenever you find some covered channel you have to find what is the corresponding threat model that is associated with that and take the appropriate measures and now here what we are considered is that given a program because what is it that happens in an operating system level you have two things one is the file system and another is the memory channels and all the other things so in a sec in a, a file system you have to be sure which is the subject which can access which file whether the property is being satisfied or not the flow level security this perhaps to some extent you saw in the bella padua model wherein it said i have several uh, levels say l1 l2 l3 l4 and based upon which now i have defined what are the levels at which the information can flow now let us consider this program uh, uh, how do we integrate simple flow controls into the access control mechanisms which is essentially corresponds to an operating system so what does that mean suppose you can say whether a process or a procedure can read from the variables or the channels whatever you call x1 to xm and write into y1 to yn only if now if you take the lub of x1 to xm which are technically you can treat them as the input variables that means that the process which is able to read is always higher than all the uh, channels that it can read and then it will write on to y1 to yn the process that means that y1 to uh, the lub of all the the glb of all y1 to yn is greater than or equal to p1 so p so which essentially means all the information from x1 to xm can flow into y1 to yn because it is implicitly less than kind of a framework this automatically guarantees the security of all flows explicit or implicit which is internal to the uh, process and so now if you consider for example in this you have the input classes which is the levels at which these variables x1 to xn are which is given by the lub of x1 to xn and this is the process class and now this process class is higher than all these things so the flow of information is possible from here to here and this one now you have y1 to yn so the information can be written on to that is all this process can flow into this output classes so this is the basic thing that uh, you would uh, really achieve when you can say that it is secure when a process is reading 
from a, some input classes and outputting on to the output classes. So now if you consider the military systems for examples, access control enforce both a non-discretionary policy of information flow based on the uh, military classification. For example, why is it called non-discretionary? Because it has some kind of a flow uh, security which is essentially a mandatory access which is enforced over and above the discretionary access. A discretionary access policy of access control is also based on need to know that is on the principle of the least privilege, what are all the things that he needs to execute his functionality of the work kind of a framework. As uh, you know already some of these things what we have discussed, a process running with a secret clearance, assuming secret clearance is at a higher level is permitted to read only from unclassified confidential and secret objects and, and to write only uh, to the secret and top secret objects subjected to integrity constraints of writing into top secret objects. So now the question is that uh, dynamically determining the labels. What does that mean? For example, if you are given in this uh, case you have all these input classes for which we know what are all the labels or the classes or clearances and authorizations what we have and these are the output. In between it may use many of the local variables for which we do not know what are all the levels at which it has to be. And now that is the one which essentially means we have to determine these labels in a dynamic manner uh, to begin with what is the assignment of the input variables that goes into the temporary or the intermediate variables and then compute all the way till they write on to the output variables. Though so, so the security clearance of P underscore of a process is called its high watermark is dynamically determined by the least upper bound of the classes of all files open for read or write operation. So for example, so now here if you say for example here and now you would see that it is x1, x2 to xm and that is the one which is being read by uh, the uh, process p. Then now you can say the security clearance is high is dynamically determined by the least upper bound of the classes of all files open for read or write operations. Thus p is monotonically non-decreasing. That means that this level is going on increasing because once you have attained some watermark, you can only see, you can only go up kind of a framework. That is how you would say it is non-decreasing because it can stay at the same level because if all the other files what you are going to read are also at the same level or less than that kind of a framework. So when the process closes a newly created file f, the class of f that is the level at which that one is a set to is nothing but the class at which the process has that level. That means that now if I am closing a file uh, uh, f and now my process level is at uh, uh, some uh, x bar and now that one will be the level that would be assigned to the new file. So now what is the notion of a privacy here? Privacy restriction processor is similar except that the level of P is determined by the lub of all the classes opened for read only. That means that it is the read what you are saying is that all the data that is going to be read by others and that has to be restricted and so whenever the process writes into a file f, the files class is going to be changed from f to f lub p. So in a sense what is privacy? You have to consider only those classes which are open for read that means that while reading you are only going to give the information the, for uh, others only if that one is possible otherwise you are not going to give it. For example, in a Facebook it may say there is a private data that cannot be given and that is private. Once you mark it as uh, uh, private this cannot be uh, flowed into other uh, processes or uh, variables etc. So now if you look at uh, process determinations, let us see what are all the issues that are going to be with respect to the problem of dynamic determinations. Now consider a simple procedure which is essentially copy 1. Now copy 1 is, uh, is split into processes P1 and P2. What is copy 1? X has an integer and Y is an integer. Essential purpose is the value of X 
the has to be copied into y. Now z is a local integer. Now initially that is the output value for which I am going to copy is initialized to 0 and then the local integer is also uh, is assigned equal to 0. Now what is the thing it happens if x equal to 0 then z is going to be assigned 1 and then if z equal to 0 then y is going to be assigned one kind of a, a framework or the other which essentially means if x was equal to 0 z equal to 1 because y equal to 0 is already existing so copying is done. Now if z equal to 0 that is here then you are going to set y equal to a one kind of a framework because here it means that x is not equal to 0 it comes here you are going to check z equal to 0 and y equal to 1. This is are all artificial programs to highlight the uh, issues that are associated with the dynamic determinations kind of a framework. So in some sense now you are having something like a, a processes p1 and p2 which is given by this through a global variable z and now you can distinguish this part could be from p1 and this could be from the uh, process uh, p2. So now if you say p1 and p2 if you are set to the lub of the classes of all objects open for read and write operations y or z as you say initially are 0 and in class low and now z is changed only when z is open for writing and flows to y are verified when y is open for writing. For example as you mentioned when y when x equal to 0 p1 terminates with z equal to 1 and z is nothing but equal to p1 at the level and the level of z is the same as level of x and thus now the level of p2 is set to the level of x. But the test z equal to 0 what you have here if you say z equal to 0 y equal to 1 if you consider in p2 fails so y is never open for writing and the relation p2 less than y is never going to be verified. So if you do not verify thus if p, when x equal to 1 p1 terminates with the level of p1 being assigned the level of x however z is never open for writing and thus z and uh, z is the actual value z bar indicate its level equal to x remains uh, 0 comma low and thus p2 becomes low y becomes 1 and the relation less than or equal to y is verified. In both cases uh, p2 terminates with y equal to x even though the relation x less than or y is equal to is never verified and thus whenever you have x is not equal to y then there is a leak that you will find as far as the information flow is concerned which essentially means that whenever this relation is not satisfied you can infer the values of one or the other. So the problem does not arise when objects and processes have, fi have fixed the security classes. Here why is that happening because you are setting the values of the, the, the levels of z as we proceed with the assignment and this is due to the dynamic labeling the problem is arising and that is where you have to be careful to say that uh, why uh, one has to consider under what conditions this becomes clear. Now suppose p1 runs in the uh, minimal class needed to read x that means level of p1 is the same as level of x1 then p1 will never be allowed to write into z unless the level of x is less than or equal to the level of z and similarly p2 will not be allowed to read z unless the level of z is less than or equal to the level of p2 and it will never be allowed to write into y unless the level of p2 is less than or equal to y. Thus there is no information flow from x to y unless the intermediate label that is z is always greater than or equal to x but less than or equal to y because of the problem caused by the variable classes most access control based mechanisms bind objects and processes to fixed security classes the security of a process is determined when p is initiated. So now you can define what is the notion of a flow secure access that means that once you are access the flow is assured to follow whatever one has a specified kind of a, a framework. For example if you say flow secure access control provide a simple and an efficient mechanism for enforcing information flow within the user processes. But they are limited because they do not distinguish different classes of information within a process. For example if you consider a process P that can read both confidential that is high 
and non confidential low and then p must be high because that is the one which comes to the in the lattice and any objects written by p must also be in the class high and the process cannot be given right access to objects in class low because then confidential information will be leaked and thus there would be no way of knowing whether the information transferred to these objects was confidential or non confidential this is the basic thing as i meant as i mentioned these are not humans these are all computing processes and so you don't know whether when you are asked to send only the confidential uh, the non confidential information whether they would also send the confidential information for example in a facebook you have a private data and a non private data that are a shareable data whether it would do exactly that will not become clear so the process cannot therefore transfer information derived only from the non confidential inputs to the objects in the low class to ensure security within processes that handle different classes of information the information flow that is internal to a process must necessarily be examined so now let us consider a procedure and see how do we specify the a flow specification consider let us say procedure name p name that is a procedure and then you have the input values x1 to xn and the output values that's how they are prefixed with var that means that you can be write, uh, writing and the x1 to xm can be the value parameter that means the input values and now you have y1 to yn are the output variables and the intermediate or the local variables are named z1 to zp and naturally there is a statement body this is the general structure of a, a procedure now if you say let u denote an input parameter of x that means this is a formal parameter and now when i bind that means when i call this procedure p name with the values let us say u1 to um and then the binding happens kind of a framework let u denote an input parameter x or an input output parameter y and let v denote either a parameter or a local variable so the declaration of v has the form v which is of type class and so that u uh, the flow of information from u to v is allowed that means from input that is input and then the output is and also the local one is allowed the class of input output parameters y will be of the form y1 to u1 to uk where u1 uk are the other inputs to y if y is an output only the class of y will be of the form u1 to uk that is y is not in the a level of y bar hence its value must be cleared on entry to the procedure to ensure that its old value cannot flow into the uh, procedure for a moment we are assuming there are no references to the uh, global variables even though it is a, a procedure so the class declarations are used to form a subset lattice of allowable input and output relations specifying the security classes of the parameters and local variables as a subset lattice simplifies the verification because each object has a fixed security class during program verification the problem caused by variable uh, classes are avoided because you know a priori what are all the classes and locally in a static uh, itself you can analyze whether these uh, uh, constraints are being satisfied at the same time the procedure is not restricted to parameters having specific security classes the classes of the actual parameters need only satisfy the relations defined for the formal parameters we could instead declare specific security classes for the objects of a, a program so now if you take as uh, when can we certify and what are the constraint that need to be satisfied uh, consider a very simple procedure like finding the maximum of two things and here x is an integer class uh, that is x and y is an integer class y and then you have uh, to indicate what is max you have a variable m that is the input is x and y of uh, uh, level x and y and now the variable m which is an output you have the integer class uh, belonging to x comma y so now if the procedure classically it is the same if you say if x is less than you uh, x is greater than y then you say the max is the same as x because x is greater otherwise you set m equal to y so now the what is the security class that is implied here is that m that is x can flow into m that means that m is greater than or equal to x and also m is greater than or equal to y 
And so now if you consider swap of the two integers and now you have x and y, the value of x should come to y and value of y should come to x and that is the thing. Now if you say there is an i which is an integer class i and now you have a, uh, i, uh, the local integer, uh, local uh, variable t that has been defined belong to the integer class of x and y. And now suppose temporary class is assigned x. That means the level of t will become x and x is assigned y and now y is assigned the temporary variable and then you are going to say i equal to i plus 1. Now the, what is the thing what is happening here? Now you are saying for both you have x level of x is less than or equal to y and y less than or equal to x are required for security. The specification state that the level of x must be the same of level of y. This class is also assigned to the Laika variable t. Note that i is in a class by itself because it does not receive information from either x or y because it just says i equal to i plus 1. It has no role with respect to x. So that means that both the values of x and y must be of the same level. So now if you say when can you say procedure to be secure and then I have to say given a specification for each input uh, vector u and an output vector y execution of the procedure can cause a flow of u going to y only if the classes specified for u and y satisfies the relation that means that you have uh, y must be greater than or equal to y, it is only then a flow of information y, y u can flow to y and this is essentially the basic security requirements that has to be satisfied and this now we can inductively uh, do it in terms of compositionally syntactically with reference to the program structure. For example, if you first consider the assignment statement. Assignment statement is of the form, let us say B assigned an expression E. And now here the SIs are statements and E is an expression and with uh, operands A1 to AN and which we write it as E of F of A1 to AN. That is expression E is a function which is out of the parameters A1 to AN. Now where the function f has no side effect that means that it has no global variables etc kind of a framework. So now the class of e is given by the lub of all the things that are used in this function. So that means that in this case e if it uses a1 to an then e the level of e is nothing but the lub of a1 to an. So now what is the security condition for assignment? Now if I have to say B is assigned E will be secure only if the level of E is less than or equal to the level of B. That means that I have to compute the lab of all the uh, variables or the functional parameters that are used in computing E and that should be less than or equal to B. And now what is the thing for the a compound statement? Compound statement is nothing but it begins with a begin and an end. S1 is itself another program, S2 is another program and Sn is program. So technically what is the way we are going to say inductively uh, we can say in terms of syntax directed composition we can say each of the components must be secure. In this case what we say is that the statement S1 is secure. S2 is secure and uh, S1 is secure, S1 is secure, S2 is secure and all these statements are secure. That means that if each of these S1 to Sn are secure, then you say the compound execution is secure because it satisfies all the security conditions which are uh, from which the compound statement is composed of. So that is one. So now here is the conditional. So now what is the language what we are considering, we consider the assignment and then we have something like a sequencing or a compound statement kind of a framework. Now we are considering the uh, conditional. What is the conditional? As you can see it is the classical if e then yes one, else is also an optional statement. That means that it could be the thing when you say if e then yes one itself is a statement or you can also give both the branches of then branch and the else branch explicitly. For this, uh, this one you also have to consider now as you have seen in the earlier classes there are two things what you have to worry about. One is the uh, explicit flow. 
and the other one is the implicit flow because when you are considering checking for some condition it could be the case you can infer what is happening when you are uh, uh, assigning values to the branches based upon the value of the uh, conditional expression. So now if you say if e then s1 else s2 will be secure if the execution of s1 and s2 is secure that means naturally uh, the uh, execution of s1 and s2 what we had given must be secure and now the uh, e that is the level of e must be less than or equal to s bar uh, s bar is nothing but it is the uh, glb of s1 and s2 because it could be the case either i can go to s1 or i can go to s2 now i have to take the uh, glb and that's how that means if i represent s bar as nothing but the lub of all, uh, glb of all the branches which in this case i have two branches i would say s1 yes, uh, glb s2 yes, then it must be the case s yes, must be greater than or equal to e so that the information from e can both uh, flow to either the then branch or the else branch so this is what is important and now uh, by s1 itself what you can consider is consider all the variables that appear in s1 so because b is the if suppose b is the target assignment in s1 now you take all the levels at which the assignment is being taking place and now take the lub of all these things and this will be nothing but the lub of s1 and similarly for s2 you take the target of an assignment in s2 and then this becomes the lub and yes this is nothing but the lub you know, the glb of both s1 and s2 this cross as you know it is the glb the other one is the uh, lub operator so now condition 2 it implies that the expression e is less than or equal to all these operations that means the information all these uh, uh, assignments that can happen in both s1 and s2 are greater than or equal to e and therefore we would say that one of the simplest way of saying is that the uh, level of e is less than or equal to bj so the information from a lower level can flow into the higher level that means information can from e a to can flow to bj so which essentially means you have to check all these branches so that that it is given for example if you take this simple uh, problem now the conditional expression that is given here is x is greater than y it is in the value domain then you are going to say z equal to w and i equal to k plus 1 now if you consider the condition 2 what is the thing that is given by it is given by x bar and y bar must be less than or equal to z and uh, i kind of a framework k being a constant that has been used locally kind of a framework And now having now finished the conditional and now the question is that what happens for the uh, while uh, condition. So now here is something important that you have to understand. In the, in the conditional, in the conditional assume that S1 uh, terminates. So classically if S1 is just an assignment or S2 is an assignment then we know it is a terminating program. Now in the context of a while because this whole program may not terminate because E itself can be going on infinitely a true kind of a framework. So now that is where you have to bother about whether the whole program terminates or not terminates and now uh, we will see what happens for the non-terminating conditions. Informally what we mentioned earlier was non-termination if I know they it may leak out some information. So now we will consider only the uh, terminating programs and now if you say the execution of the statement while E do S1 is secure provided S terminates that means the whole program which is the program S is nothing but while E do S1 terminates and uh, execution of S1 is secure which is what we have defined to be secure which is composed of conditional etc and now you would say that information can flow from e to s that means here what is s is obtained s is nothing but obtained from s1 and s1 is nothing but all the variables for which the assignment takes place in s1 is uh, uh, computed and then the glb of that is essentially the s1 uh, s1 bar and which is nothing but 
S bar kind of a framework. If you do this, if these conditions are satisfied, then you can say it is flow secure. So non-terminating non loops can uh, cause additional implicit flows because execution of the remaining statements is conditioned on the loop terminating. Even terminating loops can cause covered flows because the execution time of a procedure depends upon the number of iterations uh, that is performed. And so, so far there has been no good solution so that people will not infer under what conditions it runs for a long number of uh, iterations and when under what conditions it uh, uh, runs for only a small number of uh, iterations kind of a framework. So now let us come to the point of procedure call. So we have considered the assignment, the block statement as well as what we have considered is the conditional and also the while statement. And now we will consider the procedure call with that technically you have a, a complete programming language structure in which you are able to assess whether a given program is secure with respect to the information flow kind of a framework. So now suppose the call of a procedure is of the form where you say Q is the procedure that has been called and with the input parameters A1 to AM and the output parameters are B1 to BN is secure provided the body of the queue is secure. So for that which is again another block and now each of the statement has to be secure. So the body is secure and further now come to the input and output parameters here. Now you would say that AI is less than or equal to all these BJs because the information from each of these input can go to B1 to Bn. So this is an important aspect that you have to consider. If Xi is less than or equal to Y and uh, similarly Bi is less than or equal to uh, Bj, if uh, Yi is less than or equal to Yj, that means if there is an information that can flow from Bi to Bj, all these conditions have to be a satisfied kind of a, a framework. So if Q is the main program, the arguments correspond to the actual system objects. The system must ensure classes of all these objects satisfy the flow requirements before executing the program by the certification mechanism, the flow requirements of the parameters with the object code of the uh, program. So that means that Bi is less than or equal to Bj if means that a information from Yi can flow to Yj. And now you would say Ai is less than or equal to Bj provided the input parameter Xi can flow into Yj. So here you are considering the input parameters to the output parameters. Here you are also considering whether there is a flow of information from one output uh, parameter to another output parameter. That is how you are saying Yi is less than or equal to uh, Yj because X is considered as the input and Y is considered as the output here. Now consider again the same procedure max what we considered earlier. So that means given uh, two numbers uh, obtain the uh, maximum of these two values and now X has the uh, class X and Y has the class Y and M is uh, nothing but it has the classes of both X and Y. So the body of the program is just that if X is greater than Y then M equal to X otherwise M equal to Y. Now if you consider this uh, max procedure which is uh, if you consider it like the Q of A1 to AM which essentially becomes max of X comma Y comma M of the preceding this one which assigns the maximum value of X and Y to M. Because the procedure specifies that X is less than or equal to M that is the maximum that is where the flow X can uh, flow into M and similarly Y is also less than or equal to M so flow from Y to M is possible. Execution of a call yeah, max of ABC is secure provided you have here you see ABC, A, the level of A must be less than or equal to C and level of B must be less than or equal to C. You see that even this simple uh, procedure, what are all the constraints one would have to check if the condition of the certification with respect, uh, with respect to the flow security has to be uh, considered. So now here there is another slightly complicated procedure uh, 
uh, which is essentially all these are all uh, concocted programs to show what are all the constraints that need to be satisfied so that the program can be declared as closed secure. So, what is it you have in copy 2? Again, you have x and uh, you have to copy x to y. So, now you say that x is of class x and y is also of integer class x because that is being copied to y. And this is a uh, copy 1 program we considered earlier, copy 2 we are considering here and now we are considering a local integer that is z which is for the local computation that is also of class x which is the input class x. Now, suppose you begin with z equal to 1. 1 is a constant and so now you can this can flow. So, now what is the constraint that gets generated here is z d is greater than or equal to low which is always true because 1 is a constant. Similarly, I would say for the y that is the output value I would say I would put y equal to minus 1. Again this is satisfied because uh, all this y is always greater than or equal to low because this is the lowest the constants are at the lowest point of the lattice. And now if I say z, while z equal to uh, 1 and then which essentially means now I have these variables y, z and uh, z here. So that means that uh, z can flow to y and also z can flow to z itself. So that is how because there are implicit conditions also have to be satisfied. Now, what are the conditions that need to be satisfied? The level of z is less than or equal to the level of y g with the glb of the level of z. So, that means that when you say y equal to y plus 1, this is an explicit assignment. Now, here it is the implicit assignment and that is how you are taking the glb and now here this is an explicit assignment and now you get uh, y is less than or equal to y that is uh, the information from y can flow to itself because this is uh, y is uh, 1 is low. So, it is perfectly fine. If y equal to 0, now z is the one which is being uh, the other variable here and now you are going to say y is going to flow into z and so x is only on the right hand side. It is the assignment variable that you have to take into account. Now, you would say here y must be less than or equal to z and so because then the information from y can flow to z and now here because you have z equal to x it must be the case the level of x must be less than or equal to z and now you would say z equal to 0 and then you have low of less than or equal to z. So, these are the constraints that you can automatically generate and see whether the conditions are going to be satisfied kind of a framework. So, which essentially means you have one is the flow is uh, indirect an explicit flow x going to z occurs during the first iteration. This is followed by the implicit flow during the second iteration due to the iteration that is being conditioned on uh, z. So, now essentially now we can come to the point of trying to say can you now build a system which would certify these programs to say that they are all flow secure. So, now here we can provide such a certification semantics by all the considerations what we did so far by summarizing. So, now expression which is given by uh, E uh, the semantic action is you have the expression is captured as f of a 1 to a n and the statement is yes and now what you would capture is the level of expression E is nothing but a 1 to a n lub of all a 1 to a n. And now what is an explicit assignment? Now if I consider the statement yes bar is nothing but b and now you have to verify the uh, level of e that means that information can flow from e to yes that means it is the body of the statement yes. And now in the compound statement s1 to sn what is the thing I have? Yes is nothing but the glb of all s1 to sn that is the one what I have to consider uh, for all the implicit assignments and now if e then s1 which is the conditional now again here I compute another auxiliary statement s bar which is nothing but the glb of all the branching statements and now I have to verify that e is nothing but less than or equal to s and now here if you say the statement is yes that is this function statement is yes 
that is where I would consider the level of S is the same as level of B and now that is how when you have B equal to E, I would have to verify that E can flow into S. In the same way here, while E do S, you have S is nothing but S1 bar because that is the statement that is going to be done and now if E information E can flow to E, then I have to verify that E is less than or equal to S and for procedure call what we have verified AI is less than or equal to BJ if XI the information from XI can flow into the I, J output parameter and similarly if the I output parameter can flow into the J output parameters it must be the case the yi must be less than or equal to yj and for the statement here the body of the statement I am going to compute for all the implicit flows the glb of all the output variables which is nothing but b1 glb etc all the way to bn. And so the certification mechanism is sufficiently simple and that it can easily be integrated into an analysis base of a compiler. So now suppose you are uh, writing a compiler, now you can generate all these constraints and check it and at the end of it you can declare whether the given program is flow secure or not. For example, if you take an expression E, f of a1 to an is sparse, the class E1 will essentially become a1 lub to an that is you have parsed it, you can compute it and associate with the expression this facilitates the verification of explicit and implicit flows from A1 to AN. So now if you consider the expression E equal to A plus B star C that is B multiplied by C, the classes of the variables are associated with the nodes of the syntax tree and propagated up the tree. What does that mean? And now if you have a tree for A, let us say from A here, I have plus here and then I have a B a star C, B star C and I have A and then it comes here and then you have B star C. The classes of the variables are associated with the nodes of the syntax tree and propagated up the tree giving E nothing but the lub of all A, B and C irrespective of what these operators are not because these operators do not play a, a role in this uh, computation. Now if you say if A equal to B, then begin C equal to 0 and D equal to D plus 1, this is one block, else you would say D equal to uh, C multiplied by E. So now I can compute a whole semantic tree which is given by, now I have said A equal to B and so now I have here A equal to B which nothing but it is computed as a1 lub b and similarly you have if, you have then here and now in then you have c equal to 0 and then you have semicolon and then you have d equal to d plus 1 and here you have in the other branch in the else branch d equal to c and c and now you would compute in the then branch the uh, glb which is given by the branches corresponding to c and d what are all the variables that are being used and this gives a c, uh, c glbd and similarly for the else class you would again get d equal to c and so you would have that c and then a c plus e which is the explicit one c plus e must be less than or equal to uh, d because you have d is equal to uh, uh, you have uh, d equal to c multiplied by uh, e that is C here and E here and so you would take the explicit assignment which is given by C lub E and then so it must be the case C lub E must be less than or equal to D so that this information can flow into D. Now if you combine you would have A plus B here and then here must be less than or equal to C plus D because this information once you compute that information can flow here and then what is the GLB that would give you C uh, GLB D. And so now if you consider simply an array statement, for example if you consider B equal to A of E, if A is known but A of E is not, then execution of this statement causes a flow that is A of E flowing to B. What does that mean? If A is known 
for i equal to 1 to n, but you do not know e, it can cause a flow from e to b. For example, if a i is equal to i, for all i, if I say a i is equal to i for i equal to 1, then I would say b equal to o e. So, what is this that happens? An assignment of the form a e is equal to b can cause information about e flow into e, a of e. For example, if an assignment a of e is equal to 1 is made on all the 0 arrays, the value of e can be obtained from the index of the only non-zero element in a. So, that means that here is a point that you have to consider. Now, I do not know e and now I know what are all the things that are flowing into. So, now if an assignment a i is equal to a e is equal to 1 is made on an all zero array. Suppose it was a 1 to a n. Now, initially all of them were equal to 0. Now, if I say a of e is equal to 1, then the value of e can be obtained from the index of the only non-zero element in a by scanning all the array elements for which it is non-zero, then I can infer e. That means that this information has been given out what perhaps was not the uh, programmer intended it to be. So, that is where in array statements you have to be careful to say what information is getting uh, flown uh, to the outside or implicitly kind of a, a framework. This is an important consideration when you are going to certify statements. So, in other words, if all elements of AI belong to the same class, let us say A bar, the certification mechanism is easily extended to verify flows to and from arrays. For an array reference, let us say A of E, the class A lub of E can be associated with the reference to verify flows from A to E. For an array assignment A, E is equal to B, the relation that E is less than or equal to E can be verified along with the relations b is less than or equal to a, that means that b can flow into a. If the elements belong to different classes, it is necessary to check only the class of a i for those i in the range of a e. This is because there can be no flow or from a i if e never evaluates to j, there must be a possibility of accessing an object for information to flow. If you are not able to access any object, there cannot be any information flow. That is what is you have to understand in the context of arrays. So, now if you consider for example, you are given uh, it is a 4 element array a 1 colon 4 and b 1 colon 4 and now if you say if x is less than or equal to 2, then b of x is equal to a of x. It requires only x lub of a of i that is here lub of a i must be less than or equal to b i because a i is here. Now, I have to essentially consider x and the lub of a i it, it must be less than or equal to b i that means x can flow into b as well as a also can flow into e and what under what conditions you need further analysis is as a general rule mechanism is needed to ensure addresses refer to the objects assumed during certification. For example, otherwise if you have a e is equal to b might cause an invalid flow from b to c where c is an object addressed by a of e when e is out of range. That means that when you are index out of range, it may be giving some other value. So, that is where you have to bother about. So, there are several possible approaches. That means one of, one of them is essentially check the bound of array subscripts and the pointer variables. A more efficient method is possible if each array object in memory has a descriptor giving its bounds. The hardware can then check the validity of the addresses in parallel with the instruction execution. The third method is to prove that all subscripts and pointer variables are within their bounds. This corresponds to verification of a program. So, these are all the ways in which you can ensure whether the flow of information is as per the uh, mandated uh, specification. So, now if you look at the control structure, then you have the classically the go to statement. What happens as uh, certifying a program with unrestricted go to's requires a control flow analysis of the program to determine the object that receives the implicit flow. Again, consider the same copy to program, we have procedure, 
copy 2, you have x as the class x and y as the class x and now copy x to y and you have z which is the class x. And now what I am saying like in the same thing what we did, we can say z equal to 1, y equal to minus 1, this corresponds to the basic block b1 and now z not equal to 1 then go to 6, this is another basic block b2 and this is another basic block and this is another basic block. This you would have seen in your compiler analysis and z equal to 0, this is another b2 and another b2. From this you generate a, a graph like this, what you would see, what are the things that are going to be generated and then from that you would be inferring. A control flow graph is constructed showing the transitions among these basic blocks. Basic block is one in which there is no flow, this is the basic uh, construct what you have to consider for flow of information from one block to another. Associated with each block is an expression EI that selects the successor of the BI in the graph and the security class BI is the GLB of all the classes of all objects that are targets of flow in BI. If there are no such objects, this class is treated as high. The immediate forward dominator which is the uh, is computed for each block BI, it is the that means what is the, uh, the immediate forward dominator is the closest block to BI among the set of blocks that lie on all the path from BI to the program exit and therefore is the point where the divergent execution path conditioned on EI converge. Now you can define BI as the set of blocks on some path from BI to that is the immediate forward dominator of BI excluding BI and IFD of BI. Now the security class of BI is nothing but the GLB of all BJ which are computed in this direction. For example, here you would say for example, what is the IFD of B1 which is its successor B2 and what is the successor, what is the IFD of B2 that is the next successor is B6. What is the successor of B3? It can go here or it can go here. So now you would have IFD of B3 is nothing but IFD of B4 which is equal to IFD of B5 and is equal to B2. That means that you are computing the IFD of B5 and it goes to a B2 kind of a framework. And so because the only blocks directly conditioned on the selectors expression EI of BI are those in BI, the program is secure. If each block BI is independently secure, that is EI is less than or equal to a BI. That means that here you have computed EI as long as it is within the block, then you can be sure that the whole program is secure. So with that, most of the sequential conditions we have considered and so now at this point I will stop here and the concurrency I will just introduce you later in the next class after my major concern for tomorrow is be, uh, this one I will introduce the new security model which is the readers writer flow model and that would give you a good impression to say how it can overcome many of the uh, difficulties what we have faced in assuring the security of a, a program. At this point, I will stop unless somebody has some questions. Okay. Thank you.